Good morning or a good afternoon, depending on uh, where you are located, and, and welcome to this um, webinar on uh, Prodimex Logistics uh, Solutions. Um, my name is uh, Luc van der Perre, and uh, I am involved in uh, channel pre-sales uh, in uh, Boim IT. Um, as uh, an introduction, I have prepared a short presentation on, uh, on both solutions that I'm going to present to you today. So let's get uh, started. So I will not have to uh, introduce Boim IT to, uh, to most of you. Mm -hmm. um, so let's start now with the uh, new acquisition, which uh, Boim has uh, uh, executed in, uh, in April. So since the end of April, Progimax is uh, part of, um, of Boim uh, IT. Uh, and is in the process of being integrated within the uh, organization. Um, so Prodimax has uh, operations in Belgium, so where um, our um, headquarters are. We have an, um, um, uh, operations in uh, the USA, and we also have a subsidiary in uh, Hungary, in Budapest. Now, all these three entities have been uh, integrated now within Boium IT Solutions. Um, okay, and what we bring to the uh, Boium IT uh, organization is a uh, portfolio of complementary solutions uh, in the area of uh, uh, manufacturing and logistics, where the main focus of uh, Prodimax has historically been on the logistics uh, aspects so warehouse management and that's also the topic for today where i want to introduce two solutions that we um, have in this area on the one hand we have prodimax scan and on the other hand we have our prodimax wms now these solutions are certified sub business one uh, add-ons and um, are the latest versions of these solutions are available for sub business one 9.1 till uh, sub business one 9.3 um, versions uh, the solutions are available both on the hana as a sql service uh, server uh, platform and are uh, also available on premise and in the cloud now, for those of you who are not so familiar with, with warehouse management, let me indicate a number of reasons to justify uh, warehouse management uh, to, uh, to, your, uh, to your customers. Uh, there is, of course, the aspect of uh, inventory accuracy, uh, which can be increased significantly if you work with uh, automated systems that um, register uh, data and information electronically rather than uh, uh, paper-based. Uh, also working with an automated system leads to an increased efficiency and productivity of uh, people in the, in the warehouse and drastically also reduces the error rate in, um, in uh, warehouse operations because you can eliminate uh, uh, manual input uh, you can uh, uh, eliminate to a large extent picking and delivery uh, errors because of automated guidance in that uh, area and in that uh, sense you also can significantly reduce the number of returns because of uh, uh, incorrect deliveries now, and also an important aspect in certain sectors and, and growing uh, in importance is the aspect of regulatory compliance and achieving full traceability. And we will also dwell on that aspect during the demo. Uh, and of course, uh, by means of uh, using an automated um, warehouse management solution, you're also able to uh, be more flexible and capable to fulfill uh, customer requirements in a faster way. Now, also the electronic integration of administrative process with the operations in the warehouse is a, is a, an, a significant benefit that is offered through implementing a warehouse management um, application. Now, the uh, uh, first application that we will dwell on today is, is Prodimax Scan which is an entry level scanning solution that allows to execute stand sub business one function on an RF terminal in the warehouse. 
So it is important to note that with Projimax Scan, the solution will uh, execute, uh, is able to execute standard sub-business one functions on the, um, in, the, uh, in the warehouse, but it will not add additional functionality to sub-business one. So it will be, we, uh, there will be a one-on-one -on -one relation between functions of sub-business one and functions that you can execute on the scanner uh, in uh, Projimax Scan. Now, what are these functions that you can um, uh, execute? Uh, so, Prodimax Scan supports uh, all Sub Business One documents, uh, Sub Business One warehouses, bins, unit of measurement groups and branches, and it allows you to streamline the procure to pay um, uh, process right, from pro purchase order to goods receipt and, and uh, uh, booking of uh, uh, AR invoices. Uh, and then the order to cash uh, cycle from the sales uh, order over pick lists and deliveries and returns. Uh, it also um, supports other inventory transactions like stock transfers and stock transfer requests, and also supports the issue of um, uh, products to production and receipt from production in the context of the standard sub business one production functionality. Also, inventory. Transactions like stock cycle counting and lookups are supported by uh, Prodimax Scan. Uh, there is support for batch and serial numbers, and there is a um, an, an, uh, support also for uh, GS1 uh, barcodes and, uh, in the area of the uh, identification of uh, products. Okay. Now, on the other hand, we um, have the um, Prodimax WMS solution, which is an, an advanced warehouse management solution, and that extends sub-business one with a number of uh, functions that are not available in standard sub-business one. And as such, Prodimax WMS can also be um, uh, connected to a number of uh, additional modules to support further um, um, uh, processing in the warehouse, in the area of quality management, in the, the area of supporting weighing uh, and dispensing operations, in uh, the area of uh, supporting production, uh, uh, electronic data interchange, proof of delivery and connection with devices uh, in the, the warehouse. Now, um, Prodimax WMS is an industry-focused solution. It uh, has its pedigree, so its origins in uh, regulated industries such as uh, the uh, food and beverage industries and the uh, pharmaceutical industries. It's focused on warehousing and distribution, but it also supports production and packaging operations uh, in a uh, in a simplified uh, environment, meaning that the production operations which Prodimax uh, supports. Uh, are not uh, at, at, as advanced as those in BS manufacturing, for instance. And so we have no advanced planning and scheduling uh, in, in uh, um, uh, uh, Prodimax production functions. It is just about executing a production order on the, uh, on the shop floor. And um, Prodimax WMS is completely compliant to the GS1 industry standards. Example industries in which we have implemented the solution uh, are food and beverage, consumer goods, pharmaceuticals, and also third-party uh, logistics. Now, this is an introductory webinar. So we, uh, this is just for your information. So uh, Prodimax has an extensive set of logistics and, and production functions. In follow-up webinars on this webinar, we will certainly dwell on uh, some of those functionalities which uh, really distinguish the solution from other solutions in the area. But in this, in this webinar, we will also only give you a brief uh, introduction to both solutions. As I pointed out, compliance with industry standards is um, 
is very important. And in Prodimax Scan, we support the uh, GS1128 barcodes for uh, uh, identification of, of products and, uh, and so the global trade item numbers. In Prodimax WMS, we go a bit further in, in that we also uh, support concepts that are not available in standard sub-business one. So one of those concepts is, for instance, the concept of a logistic unit, or as it is called in GS1 terminology, uh, the uh, SSCC, so the Serial Shipment Container Code, which is a unique identification key for the identi identification of uh, logistic units, uh, pallets, crates, cases, and boxes, which are um, processed in the supply chain and which are the key element in uh, achieving traceability of product movements throughout the supply chain. So uh, obviously also GS1 barcodes are uh, supported, but also uh, support for uh, GS1 uh, electronic communication is also provided by the system. For instance, uh, um, EDI messages, including dispatch advices and advanced shipping notifications, by which uh, suppliers and customers can be informed of uh, the uh, delivery of, uh, of products. So this is the brief uh, introduction. Allow me to, uh, to show you the positioning in the uh, BEAS or in the POIUM IT um, uh, portfolio of solutions. So if we look at that portfolio of solutions, we have the BOEUM um, horizontal solution, which extends sub-business one. We have in the manufacturing area, we have got Prodimax manufacturing for um, medium complex uh, and uh, production environments, and we have BIAS manufacturing for complex uh, manufacturing environments. If we look at the positioning of Prodimax scan, then that is clearly um, uh, positioned as a solution which extends standard sub-business one, whereas uh, Prodimax WMS is a solution that can be used in more complex environments, uh, say specific logistics and uh, distribution environments, but also uh, linked to uh, manufacturing environments where you have an exchange of uh, uh, products between uh, production and warehousing. So this for the product positioning of this uh, of the both the solutions. And um, in the demo that I have prepared, I will go uh, into detail on a few processes within the uh, solution. So I will uh, introduce uh, Prodimax Scan from the perspective of uh, its architecture and how it is uh, set up. And then I will show you how we can um, do good receipts and, and so inbound and outbound logistics operations with uh, Prodimax Scan. We will do um, approximately the same for Prodimax WMS. So there I will show you a few things on the configuration of the uh, solution. And then I will also take you through the inbound and the outbound logistics uh, process so, so that you have an understanding of how these uh, solutions uh, relate to each other. And I will also show you uh, something on traceability in, in uh, Prodimax which, WMS, which is really a very strong aspect of the uh, solution. Okay, so let me minimize my... Uh, uh, presentation now and let's go into move into the uh, into the system so when it comes to uh, to Prodimax scan um, Prodimax scan is a solution which runs on devices in the warehouse so it has no um, module um, or it has no administrative module within the sub-business one environment, so it's a lightweight uh, application. Uh, if we look at it from the uh, perspective of, of what um, the configuration of the solution is, we have a number of settings that can be defined. Uh, so, uh, so basically, settings uh, for the operation of, of Prodimax scan. Uh, so an overviewable number of, of settings. And these settings 
are all documented on our Prodimex wiki. So we offer to our uh, partners and customers, we have an, a wiki, and on that wiki, we offer uh, all relevant information relating to the uh, um, uh, installation, configuration, and use of uh, the solution. So if we go to Prodimex scan, for instance, you will see here that we have here uh, the installation guide, the configuration guide, functional guide, and also customization, because there is a, a specific customization technology. And if we go to configuration guide, you see, for instance, here that the Prodimex scan settings are all listed here, and uh, it's documented what uh, they, uh, they, uh, they do. So it is a lightweight application uh, in, in sub-business one just a number of settings that you can define uh, in there. Also, from the perspective of the uh, users, um, we uh, support the uh, standard uh, employee master data in, in sub-business one. So we, if we open the uh, employee master data of a specific uh, employee and, and view the user-defined fields, you will see here um, just the authorizations that are defined for uh, for this uh, user and so for this user you see that he's authorized to do uh, all actions that are possible in um, uh, in uh, Prodimex scan but you can define this at individual level for which uh, transactions you um, uh, decide to uh, authorize specific personnel or specific staff in the warehouse so this is uh, about the architecture um, of um, uh, Prodimax Scan. One further um, information in this respect. So uh, Prodimax Scan communicates with um, uh, Sub Business One to a service manager or a service broker, which means that all devices in the warehouse, so all RF terminals, communicate through this service broker with Sub Business One, which means that for uh, the communication with sub business one in the in the uh, uh, context of Prodimax scan you only need one indirect user access uh, license uh, to uh, to communicate with sub business one okay so um, as far as the application is now concerned so let me show you here in the uh, the uh, terminal interface so i will log on here as a a user and if I log on there as a user I get on my interface all the sub business one transactions that I can execute and for which I am uh, authorized now let me show you now how this will work in, uh, in practice so for your information uh, I have connected to my um, to my laptop an, uh, an hand scanner and I've also prepared the number of uh, barcodes that I will use to execute the uh, the goods receipt and also the picking operations in the warehouse and so here you sh see my uh, barcodes for uh, the products that I will manage um, and also for a number of bin locations that I will use uh, while processing these uh, uh, transactions. Okay, so when you hear a beep, then you know that it's my scanner scanning the barcodes. So let's now go uh, and create a purchase order in, uh, in Sub Business One. So let me uh, pre uh, take one that I have already prepared and duplicate this. And so I have my uh, purchase order here. I define my uh, uh, my my customer, my uh, supplier, yes, and I add the uh, purchase order. So this purchase order is um, uh, uh, linked to my warehouse two, which is the warehouse in sub business one, in which I have defined sub business one bin locations. Okay, so I add my purchase order. So in the moment that it's uh, added, I can go to my uh, to my uh, terminal and execute a goods receipt. So I click on goods receipt PO, and what I can do next is that I can then reload 
all documents that I have for um, um, a good receipt. So I reload it. And here I see now that I have my uh, purchase order that I have just created in, uh, in Sub Business One. So if I want to start the receiving process of uh, this, uh, this purchase order, I click on the receive button. And then I have an overview of the uh, individual products that I can um, now process. So I'm using my scanner now to identify them. So I'm going to uh, scan now first the barcode for my black tablet PC. Okay, so that is uh, identified. I specify that I'm going to receive a quantity of uh, five and I add this. And now he asked me to confirm the bin location. Now, in this case, the bin location for this product is the one is the standard uh, or the default stop business one bin location. So I can accept it and I specify here that I'm going to uh, receive five products in that uh, bin location so i add it okay you see now that uh, i have currently already completed the goods receipt of uh, my first item here now i'm turning to the second item so again i'm scanning the barcode okay so i again specify that i'm going to receive five products and now we suggest the same bin location, but as I'm storing this product in another bin location, I'm going to uh, uh, select now the new bin location. So I scan it. Yes, it's shelf two. And I specify that I'm going to put five, the five products that I receive at that bin location. Okay, so second uh, product completed. Now I turn to the third one. So I scan the print cartridge, okay. Uh, I also say that I've got five eaches to receive. I add it. And in this case, I need to specify on the one hand the bin location. So I say this is the bin location where I'm going to, to store this product. So I scan it. And he also asked me now to specify the batch number. So I scan the batch number. Okay, and I say it's five products that I'm going to store there. I add it, and I see that I have now completed the uh, good receipt of this, uh, this um, uh, purchase order. So currently, the good receipt has been executed on the terminal, but it has not been confirmed to uh, Sub Business One yet. In order to be able to do that, I have now to post this uh, good receipt. So I click on Post. And I post it. And so what you will now see is that I have posted the goods receipt. So if I now go to my goods receipt in Sub Business One and I ask for the last, um, uh, the, the last uh, goods receipt that I've booked, there you will see it. And so here is now the, uh, the goods receipt for, uh, for, my, uh, for my product. Okay, so. Um, if I now want to uh, see the inventory in, in warehouse, so I can go to my inventory and go to my inventory reports and ask for an inventory in warehouse report. So for my products from Z000123, okay. And it will show me now indeed and where I have my uh, products and which quantity I have at the, uh, the bin locations. Okay. So this is the, uh, the inbound uh, goods um, uh, uh, receipts uh, process with, uh, with Prodimax Scan. Allow me now to show you the outbound logistics uh, process. So I'm now going to, uh, to sales, I'm going to create a sales order. So let me call up the last one and let's duplicate this select my uh, my customer yes and i add my delivery date okay so i have my sales order here now now um, prodimax scan supports picking directly from a sales order 
uh, but it also supports the pick and pack manager of sub business one. So if customers would decide, okay, I don't want to work with pick lists, so I want to uh, pick straight away for, for sales orders, that's a possibility. Uh, if they want to use the pick and pack manager, that is also uh, that is also supported. Okay, so let's now use the pick and pack manager. So I'm going to inventory through pick and pack, open my pick and pack manager, and I'm going to see what I have as sales order that I can that I can pick. So I select my three products, I release them to a pick list, but indeed for this one product, I have to uh, select also the batch that I'm going to deliver as I've only got one batch. I can auto select it, update it. Okay. And now I can release my pick list. and generate the pick list. Okay, so the pick list is now generated. So if I now go back onto my terminal and I go to the picking process, I can reload all the pick lists that are open. And here I see that I have one pick list with three uh, order lines. So I'm going to pick this uh, list and it tells me, okay, so these are the, the three items that you need to pick for this, uh, for this pick list. So again, I'm using my scanner to identify them. So I'm just first going to uh, scan the black tablet PC. Okay, I specify that I take it from the bin location. Okay, and I specify that I take a quantity of two as ordered. Okay, that's that's done. So this is now at the bottom, meaning that it has already been picked. Now I go for my second product, my white tablet PC. I scan it. I also confirm the bin location from which I take it. And I also specify the quantity, namely three. Okay, so that's done as well. Now my third item, my uh, print cartridge, scan it. Scan the bin location from which I'm taking it and also confirm the batch number. Okay, and the quantity of one. Okay, I have now done the picking for, for this, uh, this product and what I can now do is I can book the delivery. So post the delivery. So I'm going to post it. Yes. And if I go to uh, sales, my delivery, I have here the delivery that I have booked. So what um, uh, Prodimax Scan now also offers is that it also supports the packing functionality. So if I go back, then I can go to uh, packing. And also here, I can now say reload the deliveries that need to be packed. And so here is my uh, delivery that I've just uh, made. So I'm going to pack this one. And now he gives me the opportunity to say, okay, uh, uh, how many packages are you going to create? Say, okay, my package number one. So I'm going to pack here. And I say, okay, in my package number one, I'm going to pack uh, this uh, first item. So pack selected, yes. Then I'm going to create the second pack package. Pack. And there I say, okay, in this package, I'm going to pack the three tablet PCs and also the print cartridge pack selected. And I have now completed the packing of these uh, products. Okay. So if I now go back to my delivery and I ask for the packing slip, uh, just a moment, I have to refresh it. So if I now ask for the packing slip, there you see that I have indeed two package numbers. So package one contains one item and package two contains two items. So that was a quick overview of how we support, say, sub-business one uh, uh, tra uh, transactions with uh, Prodimax uh, Scan. Mm -hmm. uh, we can uh, have follow-up webinars on Prodimax Scan where we illustrate other functions, but this is 
for this first webinar what I would like to show you on uh, Prodimax Scan. And now I would like to uh, uh, switch over to, uh, to Prodimax WMS. So let me now close this. And now I'm going to um, move to my other company in which I have installed Prodimax WMS. So, okay. Okay, so there we are. Okay, it has been loaded. Now let me load the, uh, uh, the terminals. Okay, so here is my Packington client. Yeah. Okay, so I'm logging on. And logging on there as well. So what you see here are the components of which uh, Project WMS consists. It consists on, say, uh, interfaces on the, uh, on the in the warehouse, on the one hand, this is the interface that runs on an uh, RF terminal, on a scanner. And this is the interface that we use for uh, packing or production uh, operations. And that is typically something that runs either on a touch screen or it can also be uh, run on a uh, uh, on an, an ordinary desktop PC. Okay, so let's now okay start with this. So what you see now in um, in, uh, as a difference to, uh, to Prodimax Scan is that within Prodimax WMS, we also have a, uh, an administrative module which contains a number of advanced logistics uh, functions that we can use to define the operation uh, in, in the warehouse. Uh, now, the basis for this or the engine behind the solution is what we call the uh, organizational structure because that is where we define how the uh, the warehouse or warehouses will look like and how they will behave. So Prodimax uh, WMS does not use the sub-business one bin locations because of the fact that the sub-business one bin locations at the current stage that they are in do not offer the advanced warehouse management functions that we uh, need to support advanced warehouse operations. So what we do currently is that we link into um, to sub-business one at the level of the uh, warehouse. So we uh, so Prodimax WMS works in the same database as sub-business one. So it is not an interface, it is an integrated solution. Mm -hmm. um, but we link into sub-business one at the level of the warehouses. So the warehouses you see here are the warehouses that have been set up in, uh, in uh, sub-business one and the, the inventory at the warehouse level and that in, uh, in, in Prodimax is identical. Eh? So it's the same uh, inventory. The only thing is that underneath this warehouse structure, we will define uh, all um, Prodimax organizational structure elements, and we will keep the detail uh, of uh, the, uh, the inventory uh, in Prodimax in the in an in an own inventory report. So what you see here is that in this warehouse we have defined a number of zones. We have then defined a number of. Um, uh, devices. So I've got two printers here. I've got also uh, scanners here. So this is my scanner one. And per scanner, I can also define what is the, the flow that this scanner will execute. So in this case, I have defined that this scanner is has the capability to do all um, um, uh, warehouse management um, flows. And so the inbound uh, flow from purchasing to goods received to put away, the outbound logistics flow, the internal logistics flow where we do moves and cycle counting, and also the link to production. And so if we have a production order in some business one, we can pick for production 
production, we can bring it to the production line and we can bring the produced goods back into the warehouse. Okay. So in this structure, I have defined a zone for my docks. So uh, here I have a number of, of docks and this uh, I can specify receiving and shipping docks. So receiving docks uh, can be um, used for the unloading of goods and shipping docks can be used for the loading, for the shipping out of goods. I can also define uh, cross docks. So cross docks are docks that can be used for receiving goods and shipping them out from the dock um, immediately. So that is what they call cross docking. And then I do not move the stock into the warehouse at first, but I move it out immediately from the dock. Then I can also define uh, a picking zone. So this is a picking zone. And in, in this zone, I have defined a number of uh, aisles. So I can have sub zones in there. So I could have aisles, I could have shelves. And, uh, so in this example, I have three aisles and in those aisles, I have a number of pick locations. So if I look at such a pick location here, so this is a pick location which is defined uh, as an uh, open pick location, meaning I can store whatever product in there. There are no restrictions on the products that I can store here. So this is an open pick location. But I can go for further, and in this case, I can specify that this is a big pick location, which is spe specifically or restricted for one product. So here I have specified that this pick location can only be used to store this product. And for this product, I can then also define what is the maximum quantity that I can uh, store at this location. What is the minimum quantity that needs to be at the location and what is the replenish quantity? So the system will check in real time and define based on defined parameters what the quantity is at the location. And if it drops below the minimum quantity or if it um, uh, threatens to drop below the minimum quantity, the system will initiate automatically a replenish order to bring stock from another location. So typically from what we call a backup location. So we also have backup locations where we store additional stock and it will then uh, initiate a replenishment order to move stock from a bulk location or a backup location to a pick location. Then I can also define in my structure a packing zone, which you will also see during the demonstration. So in a packing zone, I can define picking cards. Picking cards are um, um, uh, elements that we can define to uh, um, temporarily store products. So we can temporarily store products that we go pick from the warehouse. We bring them to a packing line and then we uh, pack them and send them out. OK, so that is the packing zone. We also have a production zone. So we can also <clears throat> define uh, production lines in our uh, in our structure. And on a production line, we can define input and output locations and also uh, rest locations. An interesting feature also in this context is that we also support silos and tanks. So we also have the possibility to uh, define storage uh, locations for bulk raw or bulk liquid uh, uh, ingredients. Uh, and we also have consumption algorithms to consume products automatically from silos and, and tanks. Okay. Um, now, one of the other things is that we can also define um, zone types. So for instance, here I have a freezer zone. Uh, and there I have defined that this is a zone of the zone type freezer. And I can also assign this zone type to my items so that I can assure that items are only stored in the zones that match their storage uh, conditions. So, uh, well, this is now an example of uh, temperature based zones, but you can define whatever um, zone type criterion to, uh, to define these. For instance, if you want to have a, a distinction between uh, uh, aggressive chemicals and normal products, that's, uh, for instance, you can, something you can manage through, uh, through zone types. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, so we also have the possibility to integrate automated warehouses in our structure. So for customers who have uh, an, a combination of a traditional warehouse with an automated warehouse, that's something that we can incorporate within our structure uh, and thus uh, allowing us also to address complex uh, warehouse management uh, uh, environments. Okay. Uh, this is a structure that typically is, is imported into uh, uh, our uh, solution via an Excel uh, import, but it's also possible to manually uh, uh, modify the, uh, the uh, structure by adding structure elements to it on an ad hoc basis. So this is one part of the uh, organizational structure. The other thing is that when it comes to configuration, um, the configuration capabilities or possibilities of, uh, of uh, Prodromex are very extensive. Eh? So we have, for instance, here a list of all the warehouse processes that we support. And for each of these uh, processes, we have the possibility to define uh, according to which parameters this will be executed. Again, this is documented on our wiki. So if we go to our wiki and to Prodimax WMS, we also have an, an extensive configuration guide where you have all these settings that are defined here and that define, okay, what is the effect of a specific setting. So this means that Prodimax WMS is a very configurable solution. So it is not a hard-coded programmed solution, very configurable, but as you understand, uh, configuration is also uh, an, an, an important and, and sometimes also complex aspect of the solution. If we go, for instance, to uh, SCCs, here is the range of uh, 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 identifiers that we use for identifying uh, the logistic units. We can also define here the uh, reports in, in our solution. Uh, say all the reports that are uh, currently designed in Crystal Reports, but it's possible to uh, um, um, use other reporting tools as well. But re Crystal Reports is standard within uh, Sub Business One, so that is uh, included with it. And we can include um, associate these reports with specific uh, print events. Eh? So here you see, for instance, that uh, upon the reception of a new logistic unit, my report 61, which is my Good seat label will be printed automatically and by the system. So here is the, the list of the zone types that we have currently defined. So you see here uh, a number of zone types, but it's easy to add additional zone types to this, uh, to this list. Uh, we also have quality status management, so we can uh, define the quality status of products in the warehouse, and we can also specify what actions can be um, executed for a specific quality status eh? um, and also the transitions. Eh? So here you see that for my blocked um, quality status, I can go either to released or rejected. And I have indicated that if I change this quality status, I will be requested by the system to uh, specify a reason why I do this. And in that context, the system will also document this uh, quality states changes, uh, also the moment that it occurred and also by whom it was done and what for what reason. So we have a full traceability uh, of that. Also here we've got reasons management. So <clears throat> if particular actions in the warehouse cannot be executed as uh, intended, we can offer uh, the uh, operators in the warehouse the possibility to explain or to indicate why they did not uh, uh, conduct or execute the, uh, the operation according to what is planned. And for instance, uh, if, if one of the products that he should uh, pick is damaged, he can indicate that and ask for an alternative uh, uh, product. So far for the um, organizational structure uh, of, the, uh, of the solution, now let me and um, also uh, briefly introduce uh, a number of item master data extensions. And so we also have uh, extended sub business one at the level of the item master data. So if I take a particular product uh, here, um, for instance, this one, uh, there I have a specific Prodimax step in which I can 
uh, indicate a number of characteristics for this product in my warehouse. For instance, for inventory, I have indicated that this is a product that has a best before date. So the system will um, uh, ask me for a best before date when I receive this product. I've specified here that it has to be stored in the ambient temperature zone. Uh, I've indicated standard location for this product. Uh, I have parameters for the sales process, for instance, shelf life, which is uh, also very important in if you have products with an expiry date and that you uh, indicate the number of days that the system, that the product still um, can has to be held at the shelves of our customer if I deliver it to them before it expires. I have the same on the uh, purchasing uh, tab where I can say if I receive products from a uh, supplier, what are my shelf life conditions? And, and so based on this, the system will either accept eh, um, to receive goods or accept to ship goods. And so, uh, and now also possibilities to, uh, to catch, uh, to capture batch attributes, for instance. So in this case, for this product, I have indicated that if I receive this product, I want to also capture what is the country of origin. And that will say, define how the goods receipt process of this product will, uh, will take place. So now, after this lengthy uh, uh, clarification, let's now dive into the goods receipt process. So if I now create a purchase order, so let me take an, a purchase order that I created uh, 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 previously and duplicate this. So I'm going to specify here my uh, supplier, yes. And so I'm ordering uh, two full, Pallets of uh, these uh, products, and so I have defined that on the uh, unit of measurement groups, these products are of the type. Just a moment here, a pallet tray. So I have 24 jars in a tray, and I have got 50 uh, trays on a pallet. So in total, 1,200 uh, jars on a pallet. Okay. So I've added this, uh, this uh, purchase order now. So let's now receive this. Uh, so to start the, the goods receipt, I go onto the purchasing, onto reception. I indicate now the dock on which I'm going to receive the goods. So in this uh, example that I'm showing you, we have a two-stage uh, reception, uh, a goods receipt approach. We first receive on the receiving dock and then we move it into the warehouse. Now the system can also be configured that you receive immediately at the storage location so that you skip the, the receiving on the uh, uh, receiving dock. It's just how you want to configure these process. So here I indicate that I'm going to receive it on my receiving dock one. Uh, I can now have a choose a filter and so I can start by scanning the barcodes on, on, on the product. Uh, and then the system will say, okay, I have got uh, these barcodes or these product and these orders, select which order. I can go through the order straight away. Also, if I have no uh, uh, reference to an order, I can receive them. Um, and I also have a possibility to do a container reception. So if I have multiple orders, purchase orders in a container, I can receive them at, uh, all at once. So here I'm going through the order. Okay. Uh, there was no PO found. Okay, I forgot to add the PO, uh, of course. So yes. So if I now go through the order there, I have my uh, my PO. So I select the PO. Now the system asks me whether I'm going to receive identical logistic units or no identical logistic units. Suppose, for instance, that I would be receiving five pallets of the same product then I could speed up the receiving process significantly by saying, okay, I'm receiving five logistic units of this product. And then the system would book indeed five logistic units at once. So in this case, I'm receiving two uh, 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 single uh, logistic units, so no identical. Then again, it's always the barcodes that prevail. So if there are barcodes, I can just scan them. So in this case, I have no label on the logistic unit. I can select logistic carriers. If I want to track and trace logistic carriers, this is a possibility. So let's say that I'm going to receive it on a Euro pallet, and then I'm going to scan the product. So I have again now uh, 
a barcode scanner attached to my uh, uh, to my printer here and so also here I have my uh, my products I have here also my locations on a piece of paper which I will use to scan the uh, um, the, the product so I scan my uh, first product okay so I scan the product Just a moment. no it does not seem to work I can also select the product yes okay so I identify the batch number he specifies a best before date and as I've indicated on the data of this uh, of this product that uh, the best before date is uh, three and a half years from now he has added three and a half years to the date of today so it is the 12th of December 2021 then I'm going to receive one pallet of this item and he asked me whether there are other products on the logistic units that are not scanned no so he enters asked me to enter the data for the next product now and in the meantime he will also print now uh, a good succeed label so we will come back on that immediately so we are going to enter the data for the next logistic unit no label a euro pallet select the product so let me see whether it works yes now it works he recognized the barcode so i identify the batch number again the best before date which is set for this product at two years from now so the 12th of june 2020 here he asked me to specify the country of origin which is also recorded in the database which means that i at a certain moment can then say okay give me all the batches of this product which have country of origin italy for instance okay and then i enter the quantity so it's also one full pallet and he will book the goods receipt and again he will uh, generate a goods receipt label and so this is the goods receipt label uh, which i referred to uh, during my uh, explanation of the uh, um, organization structure so here we see a gs1 goods receipt label which contains information about the goods receipt on the one hand in uh, human readable format and so here you have the information in human readable format and here you've got it in barcoded format this is the identification of the logistic unit so the so-called sscc and here you've got the gs1 128 barcode containing on the one hand the identification of the product the identification and so 15 indicates this is the best before date 37 indicates the quantity so 1200 pieces and 10 is the batch number so if i now go to um, to sub business one um, uh, yes so if I now know uh, so to sub business one and I go for my goods receipt there I see that I have now booked a goods receipt automatically in sub business one consisting of uh, 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 two pallets and so one pallet contains canned black olives the other one contains chickpeas they are both located at my receiving dock one this is the identification of the logistic unit this is their quality status the, the batch number the best before date so i've automatically booked this into a sub business one if i want to look at my inventory now in Produmex, uh, i can now have a look at my uh, item numbers and so if i look at uh, my items to this item choose okay so the system will now give me a full inventory of all products that i have in my warehouse and where they are located and you see here that uh, i have a pallet of uh, chickpeas waiting on my receiving dock one and i also have a pallet of olives waiting on my receiving dock one now what the system has created at this moment is that it has created a put away order to put these logistic units away from my receiving dock so here i see the sscc so normally i would have labeled you know, i would have stuck the label to this uh, pallet and i would have uh, uh, just scan the barcode but i can simulate that by doing that like this okay 
So I have now scanned the SCCC, and now the system asks me, okay, move it into the warehouse. This is the default location for this product. You can go and select the location yourself, but if that location is not authorized for the product, the system will not allow me to do that. So for instance, if I would say, I'm going to put it at location P005, he says, no, the storage location is not allowed for the item. So he will force me to put that at a, at a location that is open to receive this product. And what I can do is I can also ask the system to present an empty location. And there he says, me, okay, my location B004, for instance, is empty. So I can scan that location. And he says, okay, it's moved there. And then I take the second one. And I move it again. Again, he asks me select the location, move, move it, move it to its default location, or select an empty location. And there, I could say, okay, I'm going to put it at B0005. Okay, and that confirms the move. If I now refresh my inventory report, you will notice that uh, where have I got it? And so here is my olives, which are now moved to this location. And here are my chickpeas, which have now been moved to that location. So in real time, the system uh, manages the uh, inventory uh, of, um, of uh, the product. So this is the uh, inbound logistics uh, process. Let me now show you the outbound logistics uh, process. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, create a sales order. So let me again pick uh, uh, one here that I'm going to duplicate. Okay, I'm going to select a customer uh, here. Okay, yes. So and I'm going to add the delivery date. So what I have now here is a sales order. Now, uh, Prodimax does not allow to pick sales orders straight away. Hmm? Uh, so for Prodimax WMS, we always need to go to a, a pick list proposal and a pick list. Now we can do that individually, but it's also possible, of course, to do that, uh, say, uh, on a daily basis, eh? so that at the end of the day, you generate all pick lists. So let us now create a pick list proposal. And in the pick list proposal, the system will check whether there is sufficient quantity available, and it will also hard allocate a batch. Eh? So in this case, he says, okay, if you want to deliver to this customer, you will need to take from this batch and from this batch before date and for this product from this batch and this batch before date. And that's a hard allocation, meaning that the system will not allow to take another batch. So I'm going to update this now and I'm going to generate a pick list. And the pick list is now releasing an electronic pick list to the shop floor. Okay, so here I've got it. So I have the possibility to print it if I would uh, require that. So it is now uh, sent to the uh, to the uh, uh, to the uh, uh, RF terminal. So let's now go and pick this. So if I now go to sales, I have multiple picking options. We'll come to that in following webinars. So let's do a normal picking. Here is my pick list. It tells me now where I need to go and what I need to pick. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to pick this on a movable location. So I specify that I use a picking card. And now I'm also um, selecting the location. Just a moment. Okay, and now it indicates to me that I need to pick from this batch number. Now, that also I have uh, here in my, uh, uh, in my, uh, item labels. You see that I have here an item label um, which says that this is batch uh, 006 and that this is uh, another batch also ending in 006 but with one here and with a different uh, best before date. So based on scanning the barcode, the system will now decide whether I'm taking the right products. So if I would scan the wrong barcode in this in this uh, uh, um, uh, instance. Uh, so if I would say I'm going to scan this product, there he says you cannot pick from this batch number and best before date. And so he will now also do a check and he will also allow only allow me to, to select the right batch. 
Okay, this one is correct. So I pick three trays. Yes, the items are picked. So the next one, I also scan the pick location now. I select the product and here I would have the same problem if I would select the, the wrong batch. Uh, so this is the right batch. Okay, so I select the items are picked. Oh, no, no, just a moment. I did something wrong here. Select location. Uh, okay, select the product this one and i need to pick uh, two trays and uh, 21 jars okay the items are picked yes okay so now i have picked them onto my uh, an, an movable location and now to conclude this i can go to the packing uh, terminal and on the packing i can now uh, do the packing so i'm going to my packing line I enter my cart manually, so I scan it. And then I have the possibility to define a logistic carrier. I can specify here that I have this, uh, this uh, product and the verification. I can select all items, add them. And then I have now created a packing um, a unit, so I can finish the logistic unit. And it tells me now, okay, so we will now generate a, uh, an, an, a goods uh, or a shipping label. So in this case, it is a shipping label. And as we have packed on this uh, uh, logistic unit various products, he will only show the uh, uh, SSCC. So we will only show the logistic unit identification on it because uh, GS1 uh, says, uh, that if you have multiple products on a logistic unit, you should not show them on the barcodes. Okay, so this is according to uh, Sub Business One. Um, so if I now uh, go and ship this, so let me now conclude the shipping. So I go to my terminal, sales, shipping from my shipping dock one, from a pick list. I have now here my SSCC, which I scan. And by scanning it and confirming it, I load the uh, SSCC onto the delivery truck and I'm adding the sales deliveries notes in sub business one. And I am creating here a uh, an, uh, delivery note or a delivery document to go with the delivery. So if I now look into sub business one, for the delivery here, you will see that I have here uh, a set, okay, I have delivered three trays of canned black olives and three trays of chickpeas, and they have been uh, um, added to this logistic uh, unit. So this is the way that we manage the, uh, uh, the, the outbound logistics uh, flows in, in, uh, with Prodimax WMS. Uh, just to finish the uh, demonstration, I would like to show you the traceability report, um, which registers all the movements that we um, uh, have done in the warehouse. So if I look for a particular product uh, here, and I want to see the, uh, the traceability report, then I have here an overview of all the batches of this product that I have processed in my warehouse. And that can go from, uh, okay, managing here the goods receipt. So I have here the link to the original uh, purchase delivery uh, uh, document. I have here an overview of the deliveries. I have here an overview of, uh, of movements. Uh, if, of, if I would have a quality status change, so for instance, here I have one, a quality status changed um, uh, that you say, okay, I have moved it to uh, uh, the status from quality status release to sampling and testing. And then, and so this is the person who did it and, uh, and time. 
and then I can also have here uh, a reason for it. Eh? So um, it was QC leared, cleared after analysis. Uh, issues and receipts are for products that we uh, um, issue to production and receive from production. So it's not for, uh, for a product that we only uh, uh, manage in the, in, in, in the warehouse. Eh? And batch attributes, for instance, if I look at my latest batch here, have I got batch attributes here? Um, no. Uh, now it was for, for the, the, the canned black olives. Yes, if I would do that for my other product, for my chickpeas, I would have that also the um, the uh, batch attributes. Huh? So if I look at the latest ones that I have here. So here I would see, okay, this batch here has country of origin Italy. And based on capturing this information, I would be in a position to uh, to um, uh, call back or recall all these uh, specific batches. So that was in a very um, um, brief way the, uh, the overview of the uh, Prodromax Scan and Prodromax WMS solutions. Um, and, we will organize a number of follow-up webinars where we go into detail on a number of advanced functions. Um, I don't know whether there are uh, uh, questions. Uh, yes, I see here a question. Will a recording be made available of the presentation and demo afterwards? Yes, it, it will. So this, the, the uh, presentation and demonstration have been recorded. So it will be made available uh, by uh, Nadia. Uh, to you and you will be able to download it from the appropriate uh, BOEM ID uh, uh, media. Um, are there other questions for now? Um, you can always send a question to me. Uh, my email address is lvdp at boimit.com and I will be uh, um, um, welcome to, uh, to answer your questions. And uh, please also uh, look out for uh, uh, further uh, webinars that will be organized uh, on Prodimax Scan and Prodimax WMS in the, in the next weeks. So if there are no further questions, I would like to thank you for your uh, attention. Uh, and uh, uh, hopefully I, we will uh, be uh, um, able to welcome you at a future occasion soon. Thank you very much and have a good uh, day. Bye-bye.